You unlock this door with the key to imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of art. A dimension of color. A dimension of perspective. You're moving into a land of both drawing and creativity, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the isometric zone. Welcome back to the art room. I'm really glad you could make it today. How do you like my picture? It's called an isometric drawing, and if you're a third grader or older, you've got the skill set to make a great one. Uh oh. Sometimes it's hard to tell which end is up around here. <laughs> well, isometric drawings have a different look because it's such a simple idea. There are no vanishing points and just a few rules to remember. Whoa, here we go again! need is a piece of paper, a straight edge, a pencil, and maybe some markers or colored pencils. So let's get back to the art room so we can start our own isometric drawings. Okay, welcome back to the art room for our isometric drawing lesson. I did this project with third graders and sometimes fourth graders and they always got it and we really really love this uh, project so um, I always drew in front of them too it was very important for me to model that and show them uh, what I was doing so if you're an art teacher out there and you're doing this it really helps if you uh, model it on some kind of an easel or uh, the bigger paper you can get the better so we'll start with a um, idea that we wanted to present to them about drawing lines in three directions. The first one is a vertical line and we're going to call that direction number one. Uh, the second is about a 30 degree angle. You don't have to remember that though. Uh, 30 degree, degree angle to the left. We're going to call that direction two and drawing off to the right another opposite 30 degrees we're going to call that one direction three there's another concept we want to hit on and that's the idea of parallel lines and parallel lines of course can be parallel no matter which way they're facing uh, they're still parallel uh, there's one other kind of line that's sort of the villain that we want to get away from and that is called a horizontal line uh, whatever you do don't draw any horizontal lines them. So I had the kids pick out three colors of crayon and um, I've got red, blue, and yellow. I'd go around the room to make sure that um, their colors were going to be suitable and that uh, they'd work. They could use any three they wanted. And then we'd um, pick one color as their outlining color. And um, that outlining color would be the color that we would sketch in. Uh, sometimes I gave them different colors of construction paper for this. Sometimes yellow seemed to be kind of fun to draw on. And we'll just draw our first up and down line. Um, if you're an older person and you want to use a ruler uh, or a straight edge, you can. But I've discovered with third graders, uh, the whole ruler thing got to be so tedious and that we had about a 40 minute window to hit them hard with this while they were still enjoying it um, or they um, would kind of get discouraged with it. So um, that's why we're sketching. And the other thing was that I wanted my um, students get the idea that sketching was always a good thing um, and we didn't use a lot of erasers so we could sketch in pencil or chalk or, or in crayon and we always had lots of crayons around and for this one we really needed to to kind of get it off on the right foot and um, it was kind of uh, less formal if we stuck with crayon and no rulers and I modeled the whole thing on my easel of course so let's uh, start off then on that uh, vertical line with a line pointing to direction three and there it is and we'll then hit the top of that line with direction two and go off that way and right now we would say it looks like a Y so back down in direction one it's trying to stay light and sketchy and then we'll follow up with a direction three to hook that together and a direction two 
And then at this point would be uh, the time that I'd go around and circulate around the art room and see if everybody was doing okay and that they understood the whole parallel thing and direction one and direction two. So let's go uh, to see if we can put a top on our box here with a line with direction three and back to direction number two. And voila, there we have it. And after we finish this part of it, sometimes I even heard... Um, little gasps of like amazement from the kids that were drawing that um, wow look at what we did or that really looks cool we, we drew a, a cube and um, having your example if you're an art teacher is just so key uh, that you can model that and they can copy you and if they're not ex uh, not understanding the whole direction thing at least they've got your drawing to go by and then little by little that whole thing begins to sink in the three ways of drawing lines so we'd continue on and i'd say we get a little fancier with uh, an inside direction one and direction three and a direction three. So we kind of cut a little opening in there, especially if we throw a little um, uh, little notch on it. Um, on the other side here, we're staying parallel, of course. That's another thing we want to keep hitting on, that parallel line idea. And, um, okay, let me put a little notch going directly, uh, number uh, direction two, and then uh, do that cool little inside cut and I would probably stop longer um, in between some of these things. Remember, this is about a 11-minute video, so I'd give them plenty of time. We had 40 minutes, and from time to time, I'd go around the, the room and look over their shoulder a bit. They got used to me doing that, too, to see if uh, they were catching on to this. So uh, we'll keep rolling with it then, and we'll let's do another building back here. I'm going to draw a uh, direction, one line and that's going to be always usually the corner of the building rather and I'll change up things a little with a different thickness to this other side of my building um, and of course all my direction one lines are parallel right okay and I'll drop down over here uh, with kind of a neat uh, side of the the building and back into direction two to put the top on um, and straight down and by this point, I think the kids were uh, usually getting uh, pretty comfortable with the three ways of drawing lines. Uh, just from the standpoint that, I mean, if you draw any other lines, things just don't look right. Especially those terrible horizontal lines you're, you're tempted to throw in. So I'm going to extend out here in direction two with kind of a neat little, um, well, I'm not sure what it is yet. Let's see. It's a kind of a pathway or or wait a minute no maybe I'll make a little um, let me finish that up right there uh, let me make a little like a concrete um, bridge here little walkway thing oh that's great and then we'll uh, cut back here in direction three and send it all off uh, the other direction um, our little catwalk here and oh that's that's neat that's neat. You're using your three directions of lines, and how do you how do you know if uh, what what way to draw at the, the point when you get that part in your drawing? How do you know which direction you go? Well, you've only got three ways, and usually it's staring you right in the right in your face. Here, let's do a little uh, set of steps here, and so we know we need to define that step there. We need a line in direction two. And how do we extend the step out? Well, direction three, that's the only way we can draw. We only have three ways to do it. And then uh, our vertical line, direction one, and just keep building it that way. And so while we're doing this, the kids, of course, are following along with me. And um, I'm uh, going around. If somebody looks like they're in trouble, I'm leaving my drawing up there uh, for the rest of the classroom. Uh, to model me by, uh, to model after by rather, and um, <clears throat> in the uh, span of about 40 minutes, we were able usually to get uh, pretty far with it. Um, and after I did uh, a couple of buildings, I would tell the class, uh, "Okay, if you feel comfortable in what we're doing here, 
go off and try to surprise me. I'm going to come around uh, and take a look at your drawing here at your desk in a minute um, and um, surprise me with something that uh, I haven't done up on my easel. See if you can create a building using those three directional lines and make me an isometric shape out there that um, I haven't demonstrated for you. So, uh, and here we go, drawing at uh, fast speed, of course, and um, finishing up. I think, uh, eh, let me put one more little thing. Oops, got a little blooper there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we'll fix that later. And so now we'll talk about another concept called directional color. Um, and directional color really brings these to light. So I've got three, and I'm going to choose a different surface for each facing object. So if it's facing right, it's going to be blue. If it's facing left, it's going to be red. And if it's facing upward, we're going to make sure we color that in with yellow. And if you don't understand what I just said, let's demonstrate. So I'm going to pick blue as my right facing color. So every shape, every side of these little objects that we've created, I'm going to see if I can color that in with my blue and here I go uh, filling everything in of course colored pencils look terrific too um, third grade um, once again with with third graders you get um, the problem of sharpening the pencils all the time the pencils breaking and uh, markers are okay too but uh, I think crayon really makes this one go well and nobody gets too frustrated even though it's got kind of a scratchier coarser look about it I still really love it and these blue facing sides just look so cool it really makes the whole drawing kind of pop don't you think with um, now it's got this really interesting shaded aspect to all of those um, right facing edges so I'm just going around and adding blue to every uh, side that I think is pointing to the right. And um, coming around this side of my drawing, I'll probably fill that in later. I don't know if I like that little spot or not. Um, and right facing sides are getting colored in. And I'm just about set with my blue. I've got just another couple little things to add. Um, those steps. Yeah, there we go. And before I leave blue, I'm going to use that to outline some of my things. Okay? Okay, so on with our directional color here. My left facing color I've picked out to be kind of a red, uh, like a magenta. And I'm trying to pick out my left facing sides. If you make a mistake, hey, we're only human. I made a couple bloopers in that first one. I don't know if you noticed them or not. <laughs> and I'm just going right down here with my um, really beautiful red color, my magenta, and picking out all those left-facing segments of uh, my isometric drawing. Um, and you notice sometimes I'll leave a little white empty spot right there where my left hand is, the main building there. I'm just going to leave those kind of white one color left and that's our upward facing uh, shapes those seem to be a little easier to pick out don't they because they're all pointing upward so I'm going right in with my yellow and highlighting those yeah I'm gonna color that in and yellows my last color and it just really makes the whole thing really dynamic looking and just super three-dimensional um, and there we go. That last little bit really turned out great, don't you think? And that's our isometric drawing. Okay, that's going to just about wrap things up for today's art lesson. As always, thanks for following along so well. And remember what we always say, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you've got something to be proud of. You're an artist. So stick with it, and we'll see you back here next time in Mr. Shea's Art Room.